PS Panic Room, you know how we do it every week. We have a great show. We have a lot of fun. A great guest. We got a crazy, we got a, we got a hell of a guest tonight. I guarantee you, Dad. Woo wee! So we know how we roll. I'm the comedian. Well, the great Pierre now. You know, my man, the, the Dave Chappelle. You know, anointing me is great. So we gonna go with great. Well, no, no, I'm laughing. It's what it is? I'm the great Pierre. Um, you know how we do it. Hey, please subscribe him if you can. Hit the subscribe button and or, and leave a comment. And hit the bell for notifications so we can get you, you know, every time we do some new stuff, we got we got a great lineup coming up with a whole bunch of guests, man. So, again, I appreciate y'all for saying stuff in the comment and liking it and sharing this, all right? All right, y'all. This, uh, like every week, I got my girl, my ride or die girl, Miss Tammy Dior in the house. Get up for Tammy Dior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what it is? Jersey's in the house? Oh, okay. All right, then. That's what it is, then. All right. <laughs> And as usual, we have a celebrity. Uh, we, we have a special guest. I didn't say celebrity, but you know she's celebrity right now. No, you're right. You are right, my try bad. Don't take that away from me. You absolutely Don't correct. Take it away oh, from me. Easy. Uh, you're absolutely right. You are a celebrity. I'm gonna call her Miss Comedy Hype. The lovely, beautiful Miss Symphony Thompson. Give it up for Thank Symphony you. Thompson. Yes. Well, every show, you know, we try to make a, a big impact, and this one is no bigger, man. This young lady, I saw her online. Uh, I saw a couple of things she said. I was like, whoa, she off the chain. She kind of reminded me of me a little bit, man. Uh, she's a Republican. Uh, seemed like she's cool with Trump. So, oh, shit, you know, she had her own opinions. Um, I've seen her on different uh, shows, and she's killed it. And uh, I want to bring her in, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited that she's decided to come on talk with us here on P.S. Panic Room. Y'all get ready. Fashion seatbelt for the, only, the one and only Miss Angela Stanton King. Finally got you up in here. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, shit. All right. Let's the, do it. The, the, the world's most hated woman. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Not the world. Okay, okay. I okay. wouldn't say that. All right, more, more. You know, love, you got to know love. the difference between the real and the fake. I know, okay, now. I right. like that. That's real stuff. That's mm -hmm. real. And, I'm, and I think we got the real here today. Real That's talk. right. I'm going to tell you, because um, I'm going to tell you how I found you and how I discovered you. Uh, uh, I, I think DL repo reposted something you wrote about... Something there was a there was some protests that happened. You like the protest was cool until the nigga showed up. Mm -hmm. you, you remember saying that? I do. And I said, okay, what white devil would say this about the black people? <laughs> I know. And I said, right? hit that picture and hold up. It's a sister. Yep. And I've been using the word nigga all my life. Well, we all have been. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because they're all niggas. They're all niggas to be saying. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and probably the niggas did show up. You right. Know what I'm saying? right. 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 So <laughs> what you're saying is the good black folks weren't showing up that day. It, we know. We all know the difference because okay. we all got some niggas in our family. Woo! I got some. Yeah. I got, right. I got a couple okay. of half niggas and shit, you know. Yeah. White people right. can be niggas too. That's okay. true. Right. Right. And Asians. Right, right. Oh, that right. nigga, nigga Asians. And Latinos. Oh, no, I know. So yeah, I, I lived in California, I'm so there's. So, yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me get into it. I'm, I'm, I love it. I love it. Um. So let's see. You from? They say you were born in Chevrolet, Maryland. Chevrolet, Maryland. Do you know I'm from Maryland? I'm from that area. No, I had no idea. I grew up in Sea Pleasant, Capitol Heights. I was Heights. only there for like six weeks. Six weeks. Yep. They made a little pit stop, and I popped, popped out. Popped out and shit like that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Chevrolet, Maryland is, uh, I can see why you talk like you know you talk. You're you from there. There's some niggas in there. There's some good, and some educated George's people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kind of weird. Move to side. Move okay. Side a little bit. Yeah, slide a little bit. Good county. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, PG County. In fact, I found out PG County is actually like, I think the number one uh, for black incomes, you know? Like, yeah, That's I was like, what thing. the hell? Oh, wow. Well, when I came, there wasn't no number one for that. We were, we were the murder capital when I was growing <laughs> up. All right. right. So, um. And then also said, now, this is my fact checker. I don't know how much she knows this shit. But she cool. said, okay, hold on. You is the, the goddaughter of Martin Luther King? The, no, no, what is the it? Niece. The niece. The niece of Martin Luther King? You read that wrong, Peter. Okay, you know, I'm a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the goddaughter of his niece. Niece. Alveda King. Oh, okay. That's right. Do you feel like you got some activism because of that, or just? Um, I feel like I got activism because of my own experience and my own personal story and my own passion. Nice, nice. But some people keep quiet. They you do. know, they go through shit and they keep it quiet, but you don't keep they it quiet. Do. I mean, so what makes silence, you not keep it quiet? Um, like I said, my own experience. I mean, at the age of five years old, I was mm. sexually abused by a family member, and there were other uh, members of my family who had experienced the same abuse and never said anything. And True I then. think that 
it ended up being generational. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being generational because people kept silent. There you go. And I think that silence is very dangerous. And when we feel that things are wrong and there's time to speak up and speak out, we got to stop being silent. But I think that, that, that really got to do a lot of black folks from the slavery. We are scared to talk. Don't say nothing. Just take, take the beating. Take the shit. I mean, and not only that. I mean, you know, situations. You know, the, 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 the sake of family bonds sometimes. They want to mm. sweep things up under the rug. Right, right. Granddaddy paying all the bills and right. taking care of the family. That's a lot of black and families. Sometimes yeah. in the black church, if right. we want to be Ooh, honest. Hold on now. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, I mean, if we're going to have a conversation. No, let's talk about it. Yeah, you're right. No, you no. Know, That's what some of the most hypocritical silent. people are. My uncle is a pastor. My father was a pastor. And they tell, it's all tell me that church has some of the most hypocritical people. He's the worst is in church. I said, wow. I said, oh, okay. But they always act like they sanctify. sanctify. They're better than the next person, you know. Holier than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 I'll be honest with you. I don't even believe in heaven and hell. I, you know, when I die, we're going to find out what happens. I'm not right. going to go and see that. I might just rot in that damn casket. Or, I think or, that or heaven and hell, we, we, it's right. Hell is right here on Ooh, earth. Ain't no heaven, though? I, I will say. Well, well, I will hope well, so. Well, when, when you we, leave well, here and you're not living well, in this, what we living with. Well, we can ask a couple of women. They'll let you know they're in heaven when they're with me. Oh. <laughs> well, all right, okay, Angela, okay. I ain't well, met you before you got married. Okay, I don't know, okay. Okay. <laughs> Back checker, get on Back the job. Check, no. I bet you, I bet you, what, what, that is what? not on the paper. No comment. No, no comment. Oh, that no comment. You're the hell. You're like, oh, shit. Like, my name's on the drone. Like, but no. Um. All right, so. All right, so you left from, you know, six weeks in Chevrolet, then you went to what, Buffalo? Buffalo, New York, where my dad family is. Lived there till I was 15. And Rick then, James from there. I know. His yeah. grandmother used to babysit me, actually. Isn't what? that something? What? But I'm, gonna say, I'm not saying you're not telling the truth, but every time I tell, ask somebody about hey. Buffalo, somebody got connected with, hey. uh, with, with uh, hey, Rick James. She lived right across the street from us on Gerard Avenue. We stayed at 27 Gerard Place. His fact checker. Right fact across checker. The street. Fact yeah. checker. Yeah. Go Google fact yeah. checker. Don't play. All right. So right. when you Right. Oh wow! So um, okay. So as a young girl, did you, you know, did you do girly stuff? I mean, I hate to sound like that because you. Seem I very, grew up fast. Yeah. I mean, I was, you know, a victim of sexual abuse. Right. Right. I grew up too fast. Well, if somebody's sexually abused, do they start wanting to have sex a lot? Is that what that? Is that what I mean, saying? I don't know anybody that started having sex and stopped. I mean, once you get introduced well, to that feeling, right? And that's what people don't understand, regardless of five? the age. You need counseling. Right, right, right. You know, right, you need right. guidance. Does it make a person more promiscuous? It makes you get? very promiscuous. I mean, if you're if you're not taught, and that's why you know I advocate for fathers, um, right. especially be involved in their children's lives, because if you're not taught the value of what you have in between mm. your legs, then mm. you won't have any value. And if it's taken away from you, stolen innocence, as they say, then how can you ever value something that was taken away? So a lot of us, you know, that have been violated, when you see young women out in the streets, 13, 14, fast, already got a baby, mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, it's because Uncle Chester got a hold to Hell him. no. And I think, I think it's important, too, like, it, it affects women differently. Like, not all women that get molested are permissive promiscuous right. and, like and, that. That, and some people and some depends, are different because um i just graduated with my ba in psychology oh, and what okay. i've learned is there are uh, three right. different uh, thank you i've learned that there are usually like three different types of sexual abuse victims right. just mm -hmm. like she said you have ones that are silent they just kind of like forget about it put it to the back of their head you have ones that are like me they grow up and they become advocates to fight out against it mm -hmm. and then you have others that actually grow up to be abusers it's somewhat learned behavior and that's right. kind of what happened to me and my family, someone turned to be a learned abuser. Okay, let me ask you this. It's true. It's true. I grew up in Europe, and my mother was a stripper. You know, that's what she, she was. And uh, my father, it was, it was married. My mother, father, married. My father was in the service. And um, we were on a nightclub. Okay. And so um, at the end of the nightclub, at the end of the building, there was like a little four-bedroom, four-room place where the waitresses would live and stuff like that. Okay. And the soldiers, and, you know, I would hear shit as a young kid coming from upstairs going to get some milk or something, stuff like that. And back then in, in Europe, they used to have um, pornos playing on screen at times in some places. You know, you're drinking and watching a porn or whatever. So I saw sex at a very young age. You know, a lot of sex. I've heard it. I it made sex sounds. I saw it. And... Um, and, you know, I, I started, you know, I was about 15, but still, I was, you know, and then I, after that, it was like daily for me. Could, could, <laughs> you know, could, could I be sexually abused for what I saw? Can I be abused if you see it? Uh, at I think age? you could have been exposed. I don't, I wouldn't say that you've been abused. Um, I would say that you were exposed at an early age. And what happens is when 
we open Pandora box, it never gets shut. Because right. once we see things, we're so, our minds, we have to discover what that is, just, just right, who sure. we are as people. So I would say you were exposed. I wouldn't say you were abused. That's why I you think got there's a difference. Fuck out of here. Right? <laughs> That's what I was going Fact checker, every day. how many kids yeah. we got? Trey, <laughs> kids all the same age. Uh, hell no. <laughs> he said every day, every day. I don't know why I work with these people. No, I don't really know. I don't really know. We have a guest here. Respect them. Respect them. Okay, so at fi- okay, so you went through the abuse at uh five, five, six, all, all through your adolescence, I guess. Right. Even up until you know fifteen, sixteen, like that. So I ended you- up having a baby at the age of fifteen. I got pregnant at fourteen. By had a baby at fifteen. Someone in the family or a friend? No, friend? okay, no. But yeah. I like I say, I was out there by then. I mean, I already been violated, so it wasn't like we talking about how promiscuity can right. lead to pregnancy okay and, and, and bad decisions okay let me ask you a question because you know you're, you're you're lovely with the thickness were you thick as a young lady like a 15 year old because you know i, see a lot I was of girls actually a string bean really it's somebody want to hit that jolly green giant <laughs> <laughs> hit a predator that. okay well yeah well yeah yeah a predator well, you were 15 how old was the guy he was 17 so um, this was not somebody uh-huh. you you were dating or who was this person who you got pregnant by? Somebody you were seeing? Oh, or? This was this was someone that I was seeing. Seeing, okay. Yeah. Seeing. Obviously, right. she was seeing him once. <laughs> yeah, but, um, <laughs> I didn't know. If they all right, so at 15. So then you moved here to Atlanta? Mm hmm. Moved to yeah. Atlanta. Now, I had always been back and forth to Atlanta because my grandmother lived here. Okay. So my mother's side of the family is here in Atlanta, born and raised. Okay. All of them. Would you say you grew up in the hood of Atlanta? What was perceived? Summer mm-hmm. Hill. Summer. I'm, Zone I, three. You probably wouldn't ooh, know nothing about I, that because you was in Europe. Right, and your right. Your parents yeah, yeah. owned a well, nightclub. Hey, yeah, we was. Ain't no shame in that game. You know, hey, my parents right, had that money. Yeah. I heard of Zone three by the police. Yeah, I watched the first 48. I watched the first 48. Zone three All you see is liquor stores and cash check. Cash checking place. So, right, okay. and abortion clinic. Oh, there it is. Damn. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and right. All bad shit for your system. You mm-hmm. know, you know. It really, it, it really, it really, I do a joke about it on stage, but it really is about taking a girl. And I'm telling you how crazy it is. I do a joke about taking a, I'm meeting a girl in the, in the hood, and I say, you know, some guys ask me, what are you going to do? But I say, I'm going to take her to a nice restaurant. We're about to go north. And it's shameful that almost most parts of town, the northern side is a better part. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And I travel the country doing comedy. It seemed like it is strategically placed like that. Like the north part of the city normally is nicer than well. And I, the joke is about how we're driving and she keeps wondering, like, she don't you know, see any more liquor stores and all that, wondering how people will cash their checks. And it's kind of a joke, but it's true. Like, we get some of the worst things down in, you know, in the hood. And yep. I, when I say we, I spent two or three days in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> were you scared? Don't know a thing. Ooh. Ew. But my parents had a nice house in the suburbs. So I drove to the hood for the for the big booty hoochies. <laughs> the, the hood rats and shit. Oh, yeah, just show them something shiny. Come on, girl. Come on, big damn club. But, right. Um, and that's yeah. sad. It's sad, but true. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah, you show them something like that. Right. Um, one of the reasons I think is because I didn't encounter too many fathers. Okay. You know, when I met these young girls, you know, and I grew up in, you know, in D.C., you know, I went to the, the, you know, the, the, the rougher part of whatever town. Um, and I think they had more freedom. You yep. know, a lot more free because stay out all night long. Like I had to go, yep. I had to go. Bed, I had to go in the house when the street lights came on yeah. back in the day. These girls could be out. They, they, they came out when the street lights came on. Like, right, damn girl, <laughs> shit. So I could see a lot of the environment making things. You know, kids sexually active. You can do a lot more things right. and stuff like that. No guidance. And, and so I don't like when when white America puts points fingers at. Look at these black kids doing this. Well, if you have more white kids in the same situation, you, they would do the same thing. It's not about necessarily a class of people. It's just an environment of situations, right? True. So you had. The, at 15, but I found out you have like five kids. Yep, sure so do. So let's start with, if after 15, then what? Another one came at what? 19. 19, so four years. Yeah, but I, I wrote a whole book about it. It's called Life of a Real Housewife. If anybody want to know Ooh, the exact okay. dates that I gave birth okay. to my children and the names of the fathers, right. they can actually pick up and purchase a copy of the book. Okay, well, there, right. there, 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 she plugged it. I mean, right. Right. here we go. But what she's basically saying is, <laughs> We can move on from that part. Exactly. Ah. We go get the book. Them children grown. Uh, right. Well, I don't know who like that. I just your shit. I, I know. I'm, I'm like, you want the whole story? Who the baby daddy? What's his mama name? What's her social security no, number? No, I didn't want to know that. What's the want... sister? I ain't gonna lie. That's important to me. Anytime I meet somebody. What the baby look somebody. like? What's the baby name? What no, I don't care about the name. Oh, I wonder okay. how fast they came. That's okay. all. Like, like it might be from 15 quick. to 20. They I had five kids. Quick. Like, damn, every year you had a kid. Okay. No, it was about every three or four. I'm trying to help out other women like you are. To maybe you know. 
Okay. All right. Well, then, then, then you tell me what you were talking about. That ain't in the book. <laughs> no, I'm saying let's move on. What you on. eat, what you eat it, today? It, what you eat today? Oh, I know. 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 <laughs> your ass got locked up. Yeah, Goddamn. Hold, 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 hold up. You got locked up. I did. Car theft ring? Car, car theft ring? Went to jail. Ask Phaedra Parks. Man, damn, Phaedra Parks. Yeah, well, you brought know. it up. Well, okay, okay. Well, no, I'm asking you. She ain't here. Well, so brought, I want to know that's about. That's why I'm telling this so you can hear it directly from me. Oh, okay. Ask her. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. Was this during Freak Nick? I don't know. It was, yeah, it was all around you was that time. You was out here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was out there freaking me yes, too. I, I, yeah. One thing about it, I keep it real. Okay, I ain't gonna okay. lie about who I was. I kinda, you know, a lot of people lie to kick it. I look, ain't never had to lie You to look kick different it. with that hat on. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I was out here during freak Nick. I was too. I, you look different with that hat on. Okay. <laughs> Did you see me? One more time. And I didn't fall in love with okay. you because when we first started the show, you said every woman you ever right. crossed paths with fell in love with you. I didn't. Right. right, right. No, we crossed paths, uh, but we didn't, we didn't stop. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, okay, shit. <laughs> okay, okay. So you got into a car, ring, stealing, that's a waste, and got caught. Okay. Then you yeah. went to jail. Went right. to prison. Went to yep. prison. Went to prison. All right. Um, again, I know somebody asked you. I don't know. What made you ask Trump to do that for you? Trump to do what? To pardon you. Didn't you write a letter for him to pardon you? Or my, is it Actually, I didn't. Okay. Um, prior to Trump ever giving me a pardon, mm -hmm. well, let's back up. Mm -hmm. Because I did go to prison for making bad decisions, mm -hmm. right? I never put the blame on anybody else, mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. Um, was pregnant, ended up giving birth to my daughter, handcuffed to a bed. Mm -hmm. Um, with a sheriff watching, mm -hmm. had her taken directly out of my arms 24 hours later. So, okay. you know, that's a big part of why I started working with the Trump administration, family separation. Also lost my mother and grandmother to death while I was in prison. This was during the time that Brian Nichols had shot up the courthouse. So they wouldn't do any prisoner oh, transport. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about family separation and I'm looking and seeing how everybody is crying about family separation at the border, I'm remembering when I was separated from my family. Now, people say, well, you can't compare the two. You committed a crime. Well, anybody that commits a crime is going to be separated from their family. If you right. have ever gone to jail and you get locked up, right. you get separated from your family. So if people in America can have all of these passions and want to fight and reunite families at the border, why are we not having this passion to want to fight and reunite Because our we're talking families. about criminals. We're talking about criminals. They're all criminals. If right, you right. Break if you the commit law, a crime, you're a criminal. The, the passion changes a little bit. No, 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 no. Let me, let me straighten okay, you right mean? quick about right. crime because crossing the border illegally is a crime, even if you're doing it because you're in search of a better life. I know homeboys that committed a crime right here on their own land because they was in search of a better life. I know single mothers that have committed crimes because they have been in search of a better life. So I know children that are in cages called juvenile detention centers across this nation. Well, yeah, yeah, I get that. So no, you, I get you that. can't. No, no, I get that. But everybody on, got a on, reason as to why I, they no, commit No, I say the same thing. I say the same thing. The people, the Mexicans trying to cross illegally, they can be separated from their family too. You know I mean, I mean. So what, that's how what, I ended what, what, up getting with oh. Trump. Now. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say yeah. If you when I crime, started you're... fighting for criminal justice reform, it wasn't about me. I went in with a letter of with a with a request for a hundred people. To receive a pardon. Okay. I filled out the pardon application because I was smart and felt as though I deserved a pardon because you may not remember, but you met me prior to you hearing about me on D.L. Hewley. You and I met years ago when I was working in a high school and hosting an event and I wanted celebrities to come in and speak to the high school students. It was Peter Thomas. We also had, um, who else was there? Rodney Perry. And it was you. We had... Yes, Will Packer, right, right. exactly. Packer, so right. you and I, that's when right. you and I first met. So I've been doing work in the community for 16 years. So my pardon application, I wasn't even focused on me because I was free. I was focused on the people that were incarcerated. So when I got it, it was an absolute surprise to me. Mm. But I felt it was well deserved. Because the work you people, put in. I mean, and I, and I never got, like, I never got a dime. Like, I literally have created 
hundreds of nonprofit organizations to help Georgia. I've created dropout risk prevention programs, boot right. camps, just to better our community. The first step act also to my story is the reason why the president made it illegal to chain women to the bed during childbirth. So I put it in the work. Right. So it's like, well, I you know, a lot of people caught up in their yeah. emotions. Well, then, then, and I'm like, hold is? on. Is that what it is? Why do so many people, not so many, but people dislike you? Okay, let me tell you. They don't. Hold on, hold on, let me, let me tell you. I, I know what I, when Go I ahead. told people that you were coming on the show, it wasn't like, hey, that's my girlfriend. They were like, that bitch, that bitch. <laughs> I'm like, oh, damn, yeah, but she got something to say. So I know what so I So you I have script. to ask them. So, yeah. yeah. See, they don't dislike me. They just like Trump. Okay, okay. And see, so what happens is we have this group think thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where we feel like we're supposed to control people. Now, I may not like them because they support Joe Biden. And he mm -hmm. set up on stage and said he believed that an eight-year-old child should be able to sexually transition. I may not like them because they support right, Kamala okay. Harris. And she said she don't feel as though abortion should be banned past five months pregnancy. And we know that abortions target black life. But my thing is, I can't be an enemy to my people just because we're not on the same page mm -hmm. politically. Right. We got to find out where it is and what we do agree the on and agree. stand together to continue to fight. Like you, your emotions or how you feel about somebody else don't control me. Like there is no way in the world I'm going to turn down an opportunity to be able to go into the White House and sit down with any administration sure. and advocate on behalf of black people getting sure. freed from prison. I don't have time yeah. to be caught up in nobody feeling. Just like Ice Cube said, you mm -hmm. can be mad all you want. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get results and I got results. I have tangibles. So there is nothing that I need to apologize for. Well, I'm not saying apologize. I was wondering why a lot of people, and I think because a lot of times we we are very emotional people, black right. people. Right, and then you have to ask, them, what did she do to you? Right. Well, but 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 she might. They might think you're advocating or pushing something they don't believe in. Life. What do I stand for? Black man getting out of prison. Stop mm -hmm. aborting black babies. You mad at that? Well, what if the person was a victim of rape and they wanted to have an abortion? Okay. So, she heard and that so, many times. so, but here time. here's the thing. I heard. It. We have to, for one, stop using the 1% to push and, and make an excuse for the 99 because abortions by rape are only 1%. 99% of abortions are pure irresponsibility. We can't say black lives matter without having the common sense to understand that black life begins in the womb. You can't have a black life unless your mama get pregnant. So we have to stop standing and supporting politicians parties that want to fund this is my issue right like if, if any of my black sisters if they come to me and it's a situation and they're pregnant my first reaction is how can i help you right can i give you some type of skill that teaches you how to make money so you can take care of your baby can i help you with the baby can i counsel you and the father to try to stay together for you to give life my counsel is not to tell that young woman to abort let alone want to pay for it because that is a life so my thing is, when I say Black Lives Matter, I mean it. And I'm not saying, right. hey, wait a minute, don't, don't consider a situation where a young woman is raped. We, we get that. But we're talking about the fact that Planned Parenthood specifically targets black life and that they are lying to us right, and saying I, I get abortion that. No, is I, I, I respect that. Here's my thing. If a young lady gets raped, no fault of her own, she's not ready to be a mother, she doesn't want a child, I say carry the child to its birth and give it to you. You can give it to me. You, you can give it to me. So you can, have it. You can you give it to it. me. And guess what? what? That same child may grow up to be a millionaire. That same child may grow up too. to be the president. <laughs> Could it be, but I'm not going to kill it because I, I think you. it may be I on the you. first 48. Because are you going to go around and round up all the people that was conceived by rape and just execute them? No, no, I agree with you. Because it's still a life no, now. No. And mm -hmm. many of us black folks that came here and mm -hmm. came down through slavery, we are the results of rape. Right. Like me and her, because we got some white and some engine in us. Right. We, so it is still a life. No, I agree. I just told you, I have the baby. You get it. Right? Because it's not, it because because the person that's having the abortion, you're not killing yourself. You, you're killing right. somebody else. I agree with you. And so my thing is to just promote life, to promote But to put that on somebody that, that's not ready for a kid. I'm not trying to lot. put anything on anybody. I'm just saying my position okay. as a black leader is to encourage life. Now, you make right. your own decision. Right. I don't sure. have the right to take away your decision. Right. Sure. But if you're going to ask me... I'm going to support life in every aspect. That's just me. You don't want right. to fund it. That's what you were saying. I, I don't want the blood on my hands. Mm -hmm. 
I don't. Right. Now, in some instances where it's a medical emergency or it's a rape or something like that, then that's something that we can consider on a case by case basis, right. even though I don't agree. But just to say that we're going to put all Planned Parenthood right. in black neighborhoods. And if you go down Planned Parenthood Instagram page right now, every picture is a black woman. That's offensive to me. Right. Right. No, That's I agree. Just my I, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you. I just feel like, like I said, where does the child go if she gets raped? You know, and she doesn't want the baby. She's not prepared for it to put that on her. Yeah, we can lock the dude up, but now the child has a baby. She might not. She's 13, 14 years old. She ain't ready for that. Somewhere has to be a place that she can say here. Y'all, yeah. y'all have it. I mean, you know, the adoption is a real thing. For some reason, in the black community, you know, adop we haven't really been big on adoption. I'm just going to yeah. be honest. Yeah. It's been about, you know, I ain't going to have my baby. I don't want my baby to be abused. We feel as though that choosing abortion or death is better than choosing life. And we just got to get out of that mindset mm -hmm. because a lot of us have been abused. A lot of us have been in foster care. A lot of us have been in group homes, but we grow up and we have our own lives. So I just want us to begin to have the conversation about what can we do different. That's right. all. I feel you. No, no, no. no. I, I just said that, you know, and what, what, here's my thing. I know you also a little bit off the different subject with Dwayne Wade's kid you, you know you don't you, I don't know how you I got exactly one feel. myself right, my right, son right, right, I, I have right. one myself I, I understand I but, we, but, we're, but, but oh, we're talking about facts you can, you can, yeah okay. it ain't just his kid so you no, know but be, I, I agree with you I agree with a kid shouldn't be wearing dresses and all that until they about 18 to make a decision I don't believe that a child should just do what they want to a why would to anybody a want to see a 12 year old well, boy walking around well, looking like a grown sexy woman who gets off on seeing a little adolescent I don't think it's about to get off I think it's like, about them letting them do what they want to do. It? Who wants to see it? Who wants to see it? It don't matter. People looking at them. What do you mean? It's not, let them, why are you lying to your child and telling him that he's something and he's not? Now, we're going to get ready to get into a whole other conversation. Cause I ain't going to lie to my own child, let alone somebody else's, if right. you want to keep it real. Right. I hope so. This was past right? And then year. even with studying psychology, it's an issue of mental health. It's, it's, you're not right. in the wrong body. And I don't think that it's healthy for us as a community to support people that are telling our men to be women. You know, if we understand the strategies of war, one of the first thing that they do when they want to take out a colony of people is the remove the men. Mm -hmm, like the men. So sisters, what we what we fighting for, what we support, and we, we support and feminizing our men, we support and mm -hmm. aborting our babies, mm -hmm. and then you gonna tell me that black life matter? That don't now, add up. Right, now let me ask you something. Okay, I understand the under 18. I get that. I'm kind of with that. That's where I'm but, at. Right, but over 18, how you, how do you feel about women? You can't. Hold, hold you on, do hold what on. you want to do. How do you feel about women who like this, you know, think it's cute for even men to be gay and, you know, be girly and all that kind I, of stuff like that? My thing is, like, you, like, Go why? ahead, girl. So do now all of a sudden, now all <laughs> of a sudden, boo? why would we want to create competition? Mm -hmm. You understand where I'm coming mm -hmm. from? Like, we love our brothers, we love our, our, our fathers, we mm -hmm. love our nephews, right. you know, we love our sons, because God knows I love mine, right. right? But that is not your destiny, son, right? And I'm your mama, and I love you, and I give my life for him. I swear to God, right mm -hmm. now, today, if I had to, mm -hmm. but because I am a parent, a, a real parent, and I'm not your friend, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, son, that that is not your destiny. Now, if the world hates me... Mm -hmm. For being honest to my child. You told your son that? Of course. H how old is he now? He's 19. And when did you tell him that? I've told him that his whole life. See, that's and, why, and, that's well, why well, I believe people are born that well, way. Well, I, I do. I do. You I, can't, I, I do. Okay, you yes. can't be born that way. Yes, because you will. I, don't, I don't feel like but you listen, chose that life. But listen, yes, you, yes. Can't, you can't. Just, let's, let's just talk facts now because you are the fact checker. Babies aren't born anything. The only thing that babies know how to do when they're born is suck a titty and use the bathroom. They don't have the capacity to think. They develop as they grow. So attraction comes through observation. You have to be able to oh, see disagree. something and understand that you like it to no, even know what no. you're attracted to. At two or three years old, four years old. Like. No. You don't know what you like until you begin to develop but, a personality and the concept to even be able to think. A newborn baby But I believe you're born with born. Y and Z, Y and X chromosomes. Yeah, you're born and I think with some chromosomes, of them, but right, that don't but mean... But some of them may have more Y chromosomes than L. That's why that some men are more them, macho than other women. That don't make them gay. Yeah. What, what do you think it does? I know, feminine, I know men that's straight that have feminine qualities. That don't necessarily... Uh, being gay, that's your preference. Well, okay, okay. Acting like a female. You like a male who acts like a female. That's so, a fuck personality trait. Be gay. That's just like a little boy act just like his daddy. Nine times out of ten is because he's been watching his daddy. He's been around his daddy. I know he gay guys who ain't like been around him. gays. Okay, I know some gay kids who ain't been around gay people. Let's be yeah. real. Okay. So everybody ain't been around they that. They got so. gay TV. 
Oh, come they on. They got gay now. social media. But this is before social media. Chil- facts are that children learn through observation. That's the facts. I, I, I just well, well you can well, look well, it well, up. Okay, well, hey, that's why we on the show, right? Sure. Observational right. behavior is a real. It, it, it thing. happens in time, but I also think a lot of times when it comes to being gay, I think people. Can so be then, born why gay. do people grow up and say all of a sudden they're not gay no more? How do people turn straight? If you born gay and that's who you are, how can that you person turn wasn't straight? born yeah. gay. That person, right? So they there made a choice to not be gay, huh? or they made a choice to be gay for a little while. Yeah, people and did. Change girls did it all the time. Girls did it all the time. <laughs> girls are with other girls all the time. Like girls are with other girls all the time. Then they get married, have kids, they have a husband. It's over with. That college years, the college time, I they think weren't it's gay. A preference. So at the time when they were you kissing, like what you so, like. so women were gay in the college and high school. But when they got out of that, and if they got a woman married, woman likes got woman. I think that's her preference. But in high school or college, and now they do, now they deal with men and don't have nothing to do with women no more. And they got kids and what now? What? What would you say she then? She switched up, so that's why you can't say that they born gay. Well, I know a gay man that has a, a husband, and he told me he said, "Tammy, you know, I had girlfriends throughout the years, but all my life, I knew that I wanted to be with a man." Yeah, he, he eventually grew up and discovered what it was that he liked. I'm not going to say that as a, a baby, no, a baby, know that he liked gay sex. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, like You right. don't even, sometimes, huh? and then I know some men that thought they were gay and then tried it and realized that it wasn't ooh, even for ooh. them. Sometimes we don't even know what we like <laughs> until we try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I mean, that, 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 that hit a sore spot. How did you get into politics, Angel? Wow. Um, honestly, I've been a Democrat my whole life, right? Really? Just born Democrat, I guess, yeah. right? We follow, talk about people street, can be born right. a certain way, born Democrat. <laughs> my family, my grandmother, everybody was just Democrat. I was just born into a Democrat household. I didn't really start paying attention until politics, until the lady, when I got out of prison and had nowhere to go, like they gave me a $25 check and a bus right. ticket, told me to start my life over. I ended up running into this lady at this women and children center looking for help. And it just happened to be Alveda King. And that oh, okay. was probably about maybe six months after I got released from prison. And she had given me a job working for her in that center. And I've been working with her ever since. So I walked very closely with her. And then I saw how her relationship with the president. Now, I remind you, I'm blackity black, right? From the, From the hood. hood. So I'm listening to what Zone everybody's three. saying about <laughs> Trump. You right. I'm listening, <laughs> right? And then I'm looking at my godmother. Right. And this is a woman who helped me put my life back together, a woman that I entrusted with everything in me, and I knew that she wouldn't lead me the wrong way. So I had to begin to listen instead of just judging with my emotions. And I, the president had put out a call for entertainers and anybody. He said, you know, if you know anybody that's locked up or left behind and you want to advocate for them, you think they should have a second chance, come sit down and talk to me. So Jay-Z, Meek Mill, everybody was like, no, we're not going. So I called my god mom and I was like, yo, I'll go, I'll go. Because I remember what it felt like being in that cage. I remember what it felt like being separated from my family. People act like they all about criminal right. justice reform. You, if you let your emotions come before the people that, if you know what it feels like to be locked in a cage and not see your family, then how can you let that override advocating for your people? If we talking about fighting for black life, and that's how I ended up getting in politics. I went in, I sat down, I spoke with Trump, I spoke with his administration. They listened. I, I'm from the hood. Right, right. I ain't never got no invite right. to the White House to ha- have somebody listen to me and get my input right. on what we should do about criminal justice reform. Right. And then from there, it went on to human trafficking. It went on to Planned Parenthood, all of these things that I've been fighting on all of these years. But nobody never paid me no attention or gave me any recognition because right. I was the little guy. Right, sure, sure. So sure. it was an honor to me because I knew what I was fighting for. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I believe Trump lost because of his personality. Because what a lot Absolutely. of stuff he did, black people would agree with it if they didn't know it was Trump. Mm-hmm. If you just told them what he, some of the things he did, I believe many, many of the things he did, they would agree with that. Mm-hmm. But you put the Trump stamp on it. They close their ears because that's how we are. We're kind of emotional. Right. I get it. We're like, man, fuck what he talking about. I don't give a fuck. You know, he could have gave everybody a million dollars. They'd still been pissed off at him. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And done whatever. He took every black person out of jail. It's still, it's, it's how you deliver the message with us, with black people. Right. And, not and about the stuff. So well, white sad. folks ain't like that. And they want to so hear the, the, the details. And unfortunate. True. Right. Because we worried about more about what somebody say versus right. what somebody does. You're right. 
Joe Biden been in office for 47 years, set right up under Obama, did absolutely nothing for us, did not mm -hmm. overturn criminal justice reform. Mm -hmm. The 94 crime bill came in up under Joe Biden. But because somebody told us if we don't vote for them, we ain't black. Mm -hmm. We had to sit up here and prove that we was black. No, no, and no. Now, Trump no. fucked that up. We got it's Trump's fault. Nothing. Trump lost that. I, I think he was Biden didn't win it. Trump lost it. I think it was. So, I, I think it's about to humility Trump. too. Like right. Trump, just Trump for me just doesn't show a lot of humility. Like I think it's very important if you're gonna govern a world of people, you have to also make sure you take care of them. So for me, it's not. And and looking at both parties, of course, we have things that we can pick. I mean, right. I hope that when you look at Trump, you realize there are things that you can pick out that are not the best. Like there are things that he's done that like are what? not not great. I mean, well, let's go back to separate because it's something you said that was a little confusing for me as someone who's been in prison and separated from your family I would think that you would empathize a little more of the people that are also doing the same thing okay so but it me... seemed like you were more like hey you know this over this but it's like like you said we need to find that common ground of yes these people are trying to find a better life by coming over here and they were so separated from their families and you where, went to prison where is the empathy for the peop the American people where is the empathy for our brothers and sisters see that's what I don't get about us. We always want to fight somebody else's fight. See, that we fight empathy, for our own. Excuse me. That empathy, that empathy and that fire, right, that we're talking about having for people at the border. Because, see, this is me. This is how I view it, right? I'm a parent, right? right. Absolutely. And so when I get my paycheck, my responsibility is to take care of the people that are in my household, my children. Now, that does not mean that I won't help the people across the street. Right, because that's what you say you're, you're corner, doing now, fighting for the people. But my responsibility is to make sure that my children are taken care of first. Absolutely. As the president of the United States, right, he has a responsibility to the American people. His responsibility is to make sure that the American and do you think he's doing people a, a are good taken job care of, of that? first. I believe that he is doing a good job of that. Okay. OK, huh? I haven't huh? seen yep. all I mean, we got point. out of to me. All we got out of the Obama administration was a track phone. Okay. Like, I didn't see any tangible results. Okay. But with that's President true. Trump, I did see the permanent funding of HBCUs, which was taken away during the Obama Joe Biden administration from permanently funding. And I helped to work on that myself. I did see him defunding Planned Parenthood, which is a known racist organization to attack black life. So in every essence, he has preserved black life. I do see opportunity zones. Opportunity zones benefit us because they rebuild our communities and they bring jobs to our communities, just like the Wendy's that got burned down by Black Lives Matter. The people that worked in that when these was black. Well, well, well we saw we saw who mothers. did it though. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, saw yeah, who burned down the white, white, white lady. It was a white lady. A white lady <laughs> in the name of Black Lives Matter yeah, well, though. She was the white lady in the name of Black Lives Matter. I know who the white woman was. She did because Ray Sean was her boyfriend. She was getting black wood. So let's be honest. She did it in the name of Black Lives Matter. I was hold on. If it wasn't your people, right? I was there. Right. If your people weren't trying to tell me you had a rock rapper, I would keep you here for a day because we got some shit to say. But. <laughs> but I appreciate you coming. Before you leave, we gotta play okay. spin that damn wheel. Okay. So hold on, let me pull that wheel. Oh lord! Uh, Wait a minute! I thought I get to spin the I, wheel. I, hold on, sister! You, you run everything, don't you? You gonna cheat? I gotta you tell the cheat. folks what's on the wheel, like they sister. They Trump out of the election. No, no, well, there well, you we'll go. Cheat again. There you go. Again. <laughs> All right, so here it is. <laughs> you can read a book. Hold on. You can read a book passage. They want a pedophile. You, you, you can have. You go. can have. Uh, tell us a real secret. How you? How you lost your virginity? He is. You know what I'm saying? Grab him by the pussy. Hold on. You go to the strip club and watch watch black men grab folk by the pussy all day long. Like y'all offended by words you've been hearing. Your whole life, the man wouldn't Black, even call your last person said, back. Tell us your but biggest you got ever told. Pete Buttigieg right, talking so about grabbing right dicks. I, I want a president that grabs pussy. I don't want no, no president okay. that believes we right, man right. should grab dicks. Right. That's so what I want. So spin that wheel. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Spin that wheel and where it land at? Where it's gonna be? Damn, you gotta do it. What does it say? Where there it go. Celeb crush call. All right, you got your phone. Where your phone at? Say, look, can I get my phone? Tuesday. All right. So what we need you to do? Call Rush Limbaugh. No, I mean, your celebrity crush. Shit. <laughs> for the record, I've never been with a white man in my life. All right, well, I, I can believe that. I'm just, I'm I, just I saying, for the record, because it, ain't many black, it ain't many Trump black women that can say that. <laughs> it ain't many black women been. that can say that. Even when <laughs> I was Trump a hoe, I've never been with a, black, with a white man in my life. Right, Let's be right, clear. Right, hold on. Okay. Oh, hold on. Okay. So, so, don't hate on me, because I don't agree with 
Okay. Feminizing men. I know that's right. And a boring night. Or a guy who fucks all the women yeah, and shit. That's that's women by the pussy. Hey, and hey, so go to hey, the phone call your hey, celebrity. Y'all crush. support to the transitioning eight year old children. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's what y'all voted for. Here we go. Make us make it. Hold on. Who I'm calling? No, you got to think of your celebrity crush. I know my celebrity crush. Okay, so when you put the phone up, you say, "Hey, whoever the name is," and talk to him. You got two minutes. Fake calling. It's a fake. Right. You have two minutes to convince that guy to come on over, and or you go to his house. Whatever. Sounds, but I'm married. I know, so it's an actor. Are you so, an actress? Okay. I want to see, can you be, can you be in okay. movies? All right, quiet, y'all. Let's see how she's doing. You got to say the name of the celebrity. Idris. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, damn, wait you a minute. Call I my brother. Hold on, wait a minute. That's Eldris. Right, Idris. Okay, okay. Hey. No, you know what? I changed my mind. Let me call uh, Oco Cinco. Hold on. Ocho Cinco. Damn. Ocho Cinco wanted me. Uh-oh. Hey. Uh-oh. What you doing? No, I'm actually up here in the studio recording with Comic Pierre, and I had to call my celebrity crush. First of all, I want to say you know that I'm married, right? But I also saw on Instagram where you were putting up a post, and you were saying that you were open to Ooh. women taking you out on a date to McDonald's. And I just wanted to say I got all the Big Mac money you need, baby. <laughs> right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm coming to Florida. Me, you, your girlfriend, and my husband, we're going to meet up at McDonald's. We're going to order us a meal, and then we're going to see how it goes from there. Oh, wait. When you want me to call? When? <laughs> leave my husband. You know I can't leave my husband, Ocho Cinco. Ocho. Okay. I'm going to call you back. Because everybody listening to what I'm saying is stuff. You're so crazy. What? You been, oh yeah, you know I'm the real stallion. Oh, Before oh, man, the stallion, six foot, flat foot, baby, oh, I got you. Yes. Okay. I'm coming. Bye. Good. Give it up. Give it up. <laughs> Angela, thank you so much for coming through. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate do. It. I really appreciate y'all. it. Yeah, for real. For real. I thank you so much, y'all. Thank you one more time for Angela Stan King, y'all. I know you got to run. Thank you, beautiful queen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below. You know, hit the, hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button, man. We want you around. Appreciate it.